Given these developments, how far along are you to making Italy a net exporter of natural gas? Well, as you mentioned, we began technically exporting last week. So let's say the, the, the infrastructure is there. Uh, you can technically say we're already a hub because the moment you start exporting, you become a hub. But to be a meaningful hub, we need to complete more import infrastructure. So we're building the southern corridor with our partners in BP and Sokar. That will allow us to bring gas from Azerbaijan into Italy. That will be ready in 2020. And that will be a great time when more volumes can be exported. So in terms of the challenges to becoming a trading hub, is it the import side that's the biggest challenge then or something else? You need to have more uh, gas in the country than you consume in the country. So right now we're about balanced, but if we increase import, then we have more capacity to export. And it's very important to be a gas hub because that means you have greater security of supply and lower prices. Good morning, Mr. Alvera from Paris. It's uh, Francine here. Um, talk to me, Marco Alvera, about the sanctions on Iran and whether it has an impact on the gas price. So whether there's a strong linkage between oil prices and gas. At the margins, it must have an impact. Thank you, Francine. Hi. So. Um Oil prices and gas prices used to be uh, very linked because the oil um, was inside the gas importing contracts for the long term uh, prices. What really is, has happened is that Iran hasn't been able to build significant exporting infrastructure. So it has huge gas reserves, but it's not currently exporting uh, gas into Europe. Uh, so the sanctions will have an impact in the opportunity loss that we would have had an opportunity to bring Iranian gas into Europe at some point. I think with sanctions coming back into place, that opportunity will continue to slip. What is key for Europe is to lower the gap between U.S. gas prices and European gas prices. Today, natural gas in Europe costs almost three times as much as in the U.S. And this is not good for competitiveness. It's not good for industry. So whereas on oil you have a leveled global oil price, natural gas is still very much a regional market. And that's why we need to create the energy union and continue to increase the imports of natural gas into Europe. Uh, that have to come via pipeline. So as I said, that's a lost or a, a delayed opportunity to get cheaper gas uh, into Europe. When will the energy union happen, Mr. Alvera? And, and it's very clear that if you speak to a lot of chief executives in Europe, they say this is hugely damaging for their cost of producing. It hurts manufacturers. Is it, does it have to come from Brussels? Do they have to cap prices? Or is there another way of reducing you know, general gas prices? So you, you're absolutely right. It is uh, a very, um, a very top priority on on the agenda of any company that's uh, consuming energy to produce their product. You can no longer compete effectively if you're spending three times as much uh, for your gas. I think people, uh, the Brussels has it high on the agenda. There's Vice President Sefcovic. His business card reads uh, Vice President for the Energy Union. Uh, what we always say is that when it comes to energy union, it's about debottlenecking some of the infrastructure. So the first step is to create more import infrastructure. Europe is surrounded by a lot of gas. And we mentioned the Iranian gas. We mentioned Azerbaijani gas. Of course, there's Russian gas, North African gas. So the key to lowering prices is to create more infrastructure and more storage. Uh, the gas market has become very seasonal. If one logs on to a Bloomberg terminal now and looks at the UK gas market, we can see that prices in the summer and in the winter go up and down 60, uh, sometimes 70 percent. And so what Europe needs to create the energy union is more gas storage, more uh, interconnection and more import capacity. Germany is also creating a strategy to build up import terminals. How does this fit with your strategy? Is it another step towards energy union or is it competition? No, I think there's some element of competition uh, naturally, but I think we're very much aligned uh, with Germany to try to, as I said, increase the overall import infrastructure coming into Europe. Uh, of course, Germany has only Russia as an option uh, for their gas, whereas Italy is the most diversified pipeline gas market in the world. We have gas coming from Algeria, coming from Libya, 
tomorrow coming from uh, the Caspian. We have Russian gas as well. We have Dutch gas. We have uh, Norwegian gas. So Italy is really well diversified. Uh, a lot of the new sources of gas will be in the southern eastern corridor. There's a lot of new gas discovered in Egypt, in Israel, perhaps in Cyprus. So that's very exciting. And our recent uh, acquisition or uh, announcement by the Greek government that were the successful uh, bidder for the Greek company, I think, goes into that direction of creating a southern European hub and with Italy being part of that. All right, Mr. Alvera, you mentioned the Bloomberg terminal, so you get to come back anytime you want. Well done. We do have great charts actually looking at the import-export prices. But talk to me about Brexit and the energy issues related to Brexit for gas companies. I really hope that Brexit will not have an impact on the free movement of energy between the UK and Europe. The UK has taken a courageous move to uh, not invest in new storage capacity. So currently the UK has very little gas storage, which is probably one of the reasons why gas prices move up and down uh, seasonally so much. And the UK is actually using a lot of the European storage for its own needs. Uh, we operate with uh, Fluxus, a pipeline called Interconnector, physically connecting Belgium and the UK. And we can only hope that the flows of gas uh, are, uh, let's say, un undisturbed uh, by Brexit. Certainly, I'm surprised not to see energy so high on the Brexit discussions, because potentially that could have uh, very big consequences. What potential consequences if it doesn't move higher up on the Brexit agenda then? What's the worst case scenario for your plans of this energy union? Well, you certainly have uh, an Irish issue with, with uh, uh, interconnections there. And you certainly have, as I said, the UK borrowing a lot of flexibility from the continent in terms of gas storage, in terms of electricity intermittence. Um, so I think that's, that's something that has to be preserved and people need to find ways to preserve that. I think what Europe loses from the UK leaving is a beacon of wise energy policy. The UK has been the first major Western country to go uh, against coal with a clear uh, idea of exiting coal, which was very courageous and a lot of countries are following suit. In order to do that, uh, the UK needs to have access to the continent, I think, for not only the supply of energy, but for that flexibility. The yeah. UK still thinks of itself as a, as a gas hub, as in kind of somewhat of an exporting region. Uh, that is certainly true for oil, but when it comes to energy and gas, the UK is importing a lot of its uh, gas mm. from, from Europe. A lot of the discussions now are centering on exactly what kind of customs deal the UK is going to get with the EU. Do you have any sort of preference of a customs arrangement, deal, whatever you want to call it, customs union that would work best for the uh, gas industry? I think when it comes to energy, the less uh, interference there is, the better. So um, a customs union would, would be helpful for energy. I think today the, the news that the Norwegian government is, is uh, uh, looking at, at with greater favor at a kind of a Norwegian model, uh, that clearly has, has shown to work uh, for gas and, and it's in the interest of Norway that's exporting a lot of natural gas into the UK to have the least possible disruption. We hear that we're really very close to forming an Italian government. Now, I know you don't want to comment on the politics specifically, but is there anything, any impact in terms of business sentiment or the perception of Italy by foreign investors that has an impact on your business and your industry? I think the markets have been very uh, calm. Uh, Italy has been without a government now for, for many weeks and the economy is, is working. I think from our perspective, we've seen now 14 or soon to be 15 consecutive quarters of growth in gas demand for industry. That's a very good telltale and, and signal for how the economy is, is really beginning to recover. And, and so I think the strength of the economy uh, is, and, and the reaction of the market is a positive for uh, whoever becomes the leader of this new coalition. And we should give them a chance to see what they can achieve. Marco Alvera, great to have you with us. SNAM Chief Executive Officer 